Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I have a bit of a confession to make. Uh, the video that I was supposed to upload today has gone missing and that's fine. Sometimes these things happen. So that means that today's video um, is gonna be, a, it's gonna be one of those like informative videos, but I'm gonna do it in a vlog style because I've got a multitask here. So this video, I am just finishing up my first rotation and I wanted to talk to you guys about how to choose a lab for your PhD. Whether you have rotations or not, choosing a lab and choosing where you're gonna spend like the next four to six years is a huge commitment. So I want to sort of go through the things that I've learned from my first rotation and what you guys can start to look for when you're considering applying for PhD or if you're considering settling down in a lab. So let's get stuck in. One of the key things that you need to bear in mind when you are choosing a lab is the actual project. So this might come as like, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> because obviously that's the thing that you're going to be spending most of your time actually working on. So while the project is really, really important, I also wouldn't put it at like the top of your list. I think there are other factors which I'll talk about a bit later that are more important than the project itself, but it is still really important that you do quite a lot of reading around your lab, the potential projects, look at their previous papers that they've published, that kind of thing, just to check that the lab that you're either rotating in or joining is actually doing projects that you're interested in, because that would really suck if you ended up in a project like in a lab that is doing a project and you're actually kind of bored by it. So make sure that it's somewhere that you can be stimulated and you are interested in the project itself. We are driving currently um, to class, so it's a little bit wobbly. What else I need to say about a project? Make sure it's achievable. And it would also be nice if there were some like sub projects that you could branch out to, because that would give you more scope to like publish more papers or have more like applications for your research. So something that has the scope to be extended. A lot of the time it depends on what kind of funding your PI has. So I know a lot of PIs will only have funding for like specific projects. They won't necessarily be like super keen to let the student dictate what project they're doing doing uh, but other labs are like oh yeah we're really up for it like we'll do whatever the student wants to do so make sure that like that kind of working style is also what you're looking for so like definitely having informational interviews with um, PIs other students that kind of thing just to make sure that like the project and the way that that is set up is going to be something that you're going to get on with good thing about vet school is random free food mm. I don't know if you guys can see this but it is snowing it is the first snow of the season Look at it. So the next important thing that you should look for in a lab is mentorship. And I briefly want to cover the difference between mentorship and a, someone who's an advisor rather than a mentor. So if you have a mentor, they tend to sort of work with you on problems um, and really kind of check up on your progress regularly, that kind of thing. Whereas an advisor will just kind of give you general advice. For example, if you're looking to be a better grad student, your advisor might say, oh, read these papers. Whereas a mentor would say, read these papers, we'll discuss them tomorrow and we can see how you've learned from them and I can maybe give you some more papers to read. So that's kind of the difference. And I think this is something that you really have to bear in mind when you're having those initial like informational interviews with your potential PI um, or if you're on rotation with them, just like see how they behave. Another key one is to talk to uh, grad students that are currently in the lab because that is the biggest, biggest, biggest like telltale for what the general vibe of the lab is like. A lot of the time PIs might try and like make it sound amazing, you know, whoa, it's so good. But actually like talking to the graduate students is absolutely invaluable knowledge. So definitely, definitely do that. And I guess this kind of brings me on to the second thing. So like your lab mates, they're the people that you're gonna spend like day in, day out with, they're the people that you're probably gonna be asking for advice from the most. Um, so like making sure that you have a really good working relationship with your lab mates, like definitely see the vibe of the lab. Like I know that some labs are more social than others. So if you want a sociable lab or if you don't want a sociable lab, like having that kind of explanation of what you will actually want your day-to-day -day working life to look like in the lab is very important when you're having these interviews. Again, like I said before, talking to grad students, like seeing what the vibe is, maybe they have regular meetups or socials, or maybe they regularly hang out after work or that kind of thing, just like making sure that it has the sort of vibe that you're looking for because lab is a lifestyle. So you've got to make sure that you're, it fits with what you want to get out of this PhD because it's a very, very, very long time to be miserable if you hate it there. 
oh, I've come to sit down here because I just find it like a bit more of a fun angle for like filming videos. I don't really know why. But the other thing that I want to cover, and I, this is actually salvageable from the video that like completely went wrong and deleted itself. So um, excuse the little outfit and time of day change, but funding and what type of funding you're on, what type of funding the lab has, that's definitely something to bear in mind because you don't want to join a lab that only has funding for like a year or the PI is retiring. So like having that, it's a very awkward conversation, but I would definitely say like having that conversation early, early on is key to making sure that like you're actually a fit for the lab and they are actually going to be able to take you because it could be the best lab in the world, but if they don't have funding, then you're not going to be able to work in it. So, and yeah, just being aware of like what kind of funding you're on. Cause like sometimes fellowships you're paid for. Do you know what I mean? Like you, the PI doesn't need to pay money. I don't really know how it all works and stuff, but like, I know that in some fellowships, like you might be fully funded for the duration of it. So yeah, that's just something to be aware of. So in this little short clip, I will be breaking down the types of funding available at, uh, for graduate studies. Number one, the GRA. So basically you're employed by the university to write your thesis, but you are considered an employee. And that is absolutely the second type of funding is a research assistantship. This is basically where you're employed to do research that isn't thesis related. And your work day will typically about be about 15 to 20 hours per week. The third type of funding is a TA or teaching assistant and this is where you're again employed by the university to help out with like teaching classes, teaching courses, that kind of thing. That will again be about 15 to 20 hours per week. Another type of funding employment is GA or a graduate assistantship and this is basically where you're employed again by the university but this time to sort of help out faculty and essentially being like a, a helpful person so that could be like organizing conferences with faculty or something like that. I don't know anyone on this actually but I suppose people are on it, which is why it's like a listed thing. But I don't know if it's necessarily super common for like graduate students. I think the main ones are a GRA and which I'm going to come to in a minute, a fellowship. And this is basically an all inclusive package where it's essentially like a massive stipend. So for this, you're not considered employed by the university. So it does cover full funding, but you have no teaching responsibilities. So that is it for my kind of breakdown of like what to look for in a lab and what to prioritize. So the key sort of takeaways is, is just knowing how you would balance all of those factors. So I would recommend balancing mentorship and lab mates above projects, but also making sure that you are happy with each of those aspects in return. Always making sure that you do ask about funding early on because you don't want to be caught in a trap. Um, and yeah, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, I'd love to know what you guys most favor in a lab. So if you let me know in the comments and yeah, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Bye.